How's everybody doing? My name's Mike, and we got Mr. Archie with us today. He is a corgi. He's about five, uh, six months old, and uh, he is actually lives in the same home as uh, Kai, so they live together. We kind of off uh, set them by by a week, and so he has. He's coming to me for normal things like most dogs is for for pulling on a leash and for you know just just all around misbehaving. There's really a structure that the dogs aren't understanding in the home. So he had some kind of medical issue where he had like a salvation gland that was like swelling up. Now the dogs, we don't get video of it because we're always encouraging the dogs to not pull. So, but what I've witnessed uh, and when I first put the dog on a leash, he pulled so much that on a flat collar, there's going to be constant pressure, almost like a tourniquet right here. So we're using a prong collar with him that can only tighten up so much. The way we teach them, the way we use it, there's not pressure all the time on the leash. As you see right now, the leash is actually loose. He's got to stay in my vicinity though. So we tighten up the, the collar for just, hey, one second. And I can also use my hand. So if I don't want to use the collar, say we know the dog's got a medical condition, hey, I can poke the dog with my hand to let him know, stop sniffing the ground, stop moving around, just relax right there while I do my thing until I get to you. So. I can use my hand with the dog and that eliminates doing anything hey, on the dog's uh, neck. So also with this collar, the reason we would use a prom collar is because it evenly distributes pressure. Now I know where the salvation gland was uh, a little swollen was down here. The medication has brought that down. I can't even feel it. So what we do with the prong collar is we take the chain link portion of the prong goes to this part of the neck to avoid anything touching that salvation gland, okay? The prong collar has prongs that are about a half inch long, and those prongs elevate that chain link portion up off the dog's trachea. So it's a very safe collar to use on a dog, especially a dog with having some kind of medical issues. So that's why we're using a prong. They seem to be the, the safest collar you can get out there if used properly. Of course, anybody can turn the tool into a bad thing if it's not used right. So. Let's go ahead and get to it. And uh, I'm, I've, I've already done this a little bit with them. I've only had them for, I think, about two days. And we're just going to do the attention exercise and get them to heal, uh, maybe have them sit a little bit. And like I said, I'll, I'm going to demonstrate at one point with my hand how to get the dog to heal to me. That way I'm not even using the collar at all. But first, let's just, you see how he's messing around, not really paying attention. This is what we call the attention exercise. So. I can, we got my dog out on place too, so he's going to go towards him. I can go the opposite way, just like this, boom. And then anytime the dog, good. If the dog turns towards me, I'll tell him, good boy. So just a little pressure, good. Just a little pressure, good. Good boy. A little pressure, just a little pressure. Good. So, good. See, there's no pressure, no pressure, no pressure, pressure. Good. No pressure, no pressure, pressure. No pressure, pressure, see? So we turn the pressure on and off for him. So it's on, it's off, off, now it's on. There it is. Good boy. See how he's turning towards me? He's keeping the leash loose. See, see that? Ah. See, he's trying to mess with my dog. Good boy, you're doing a good job. Buddy. My dog's doing what he's supposed to do. Come here. Good. And this is also gonna help him with the urge to mess with my dog. This is going to help him. So once I have his attention and start to get him to heal, I can use my hand like a uh, herding dog just to try and stop him. If the dog doesn't stop, heal. I can use my hand to actually uh, do the same thing, that little finger poke. Hey, see, so just like that. They don't like that. <laughs> they don't like that. That physical touch is something they're used to responding to. Okay, heal. Good. Good boy. Hey. Good, good. Sit. Good boy. Heel. Good job. Hey. So if he tries to go to, you see, if he tries to put his nose to the ground, we put the pressure on. Now, if you watch, the pressure's off the dog's neck. This is why it's important to train the dog. The dog has a medical issue. We're going to train the dog in a way that we're going to have the least pressure on the dog's neck. And this is just the start, right? So eventually, this will get even better and it will be even looser. So, good boy. You see that scratching? A lot of times the dog's actually trying to scratch the collar off them because they don't want to continue in the exercise. Now at first, 
the dogs, uh, they don't really know what's going on because they, they haven't had this type of training. So uh, it takes them some time, but what you'll see is even if the dog's body language doesn't look the greatest, the more you do it, they start to catch on and get the idea, you will see a very happy dog. We always see a dog that is pleased uh, to do these things. But at first, since they've been allowed to do whatever they want in someone else's home, they try that same thing with me, and they soon learn that that's not how it goes here. Heel. Good boy. Hey, hey. So if he tries to go in front of me, I give him a little leash pop, or again, I can use my hand. Hey. See, he didn't stop. Hey. See, he didn't stop when I just used my hand like that, so that's when I got physical and gave him a little touch. Heel. Hey. Heel. Good. Good. Good boy. Sit. So if he doesn't sit, I put a little pressure on the collar. Sit. Good boy. Heel. Sit. And this is how, it, good boy, good job Archie, good sit. And this is how you get uh, a dog who wants to go up to the other dog in the room. See, my dog's doing exactly what he's been trained to do. He's on place, he's relaxing, not messing with any other dog. You know, I don't care if this dog's trying to go after my dog, his responsibility is to sit there and not do a thing. And afterwards, he gets to train, and uh, that's how he kind of earns uh, his keep here. So, uh, it's going to help train a dog like Archie to not go after the dog that's not, that's just relaxing. You know, you don't need to go up to every dog, you need to respect their space. And anything coming face on, like a dog rushing into their space like that, is disrespectful and can cause a dog uh, to react. So, heal. So this is how we get them. This is how we always start off. And with the dog with a medical issue, a prong is a great tool if you know how to use it properly. Sadly, there's not many trainers that do know how to use it properly. And uh, there's definitely not many, there's definitely dog owners that don't uh, know how to use it. These prongs are not meant to put on the dog and then allow them to just walk in front of you. There's a specific way to train the dog to the tool so that it is effective 